Welcome back, Nebraska fans. It's November 7th, 2021. Welcome to 2021. Hope you're happy to be here. Well, I'm at home today in my home office, welcome to my crib here in the basement. <laughs> but today I wanted to take a look at one of the most useful websites I have found for finding places to explore in Nebraska. And that, of course, is Outdoor Nebraska's website. So we're going to take a look today at some of the guides uh, the, and the maps on that website and kind of get you familiar with navigating around, clicking around and seeing what's out there because there's a lot of good stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I am here on OutdoorNebraska.org and this is their, their homepage. We've got a little scrolling context map uh, carousel here tells you you know what's going on uh, but the the first thing I want to do is uh, find out what things are still available to do in January so if I go to this menu item for things to do and then I can come down and there's all sorts of options down here but if I come down to see the hunting seasons we can actually see what's still in season this month because there actually are still a few things open Great, so now I'm on the hunting seasons and application dates. And here we've got everything broken out by species. If I wanted to see mountain lion information, I could come down here and check that out. So Pine Ridge runs from January 2nd through February 28th. Application period was actually last year, November 2nd to December 9th. Small game species waterfowl, fur bear, or you can scroll back up here and just download this printable season's date card. So this is still the 2020 card. Uh, so these are all the dates that started last year, but you can also see some of these extend into this year, like Turkey. So Turkey started September 15th last year and it goes through January 31st. Of this year. Deer antlerless goes through January 15th so just about a week left on that one. Same with elk antlerless. And what else do we have going on? Antelope doe fawn late season through January 31st. And then squirrel goes through the end of the month and cottontail jackrabbit goes through the end of February. Then we have rounded out with grouse and pheasant, quail and partridge through the end of the month. So there's actually still quite a few things open, just you know, ending um, into this month and uh, in February. Over here on the right side of the card, you could see the application purchase periods. So we've got um, fall. August 10th seasons close. May purchase two fall permits. So for turkey. Um, January 13th, so this is actually coming up. If you want to purchase your spring turkey permits, do so within the next week by January 13th. And you can get up to three permits, one permit per turkey. So yeah, that's kind of what's going on still. So this is also good to know for people who aren't hunters. If, if you want to get out and enjoy some of the wildlife management areas, take a, take a walk, um, be sure to check with regulations on if you can bring your dog. I, I don't know if dogs are allowed. You know, I guess hunting dogs are allowed, but I don't think you, I don't know if you can just take your dog for a walk in some of them. But get on here at Outdoor Nebraska and, and check it out. But you can take take a nice nature walk out there, see what's going on, and not be concerned about you know if there's going to be any hunters out there. Just enjoy it. Let's see, get back to the. Okay, now I'm back on the the hunting page where I was, and so that was kind of you know an overview of what's still open, what's out there, how to find what's upcoming, and of course there's always helpful links over here in the sidebar, how to get your permits so that you you're ready to hunt. And I should mention that most of those permits, for example, um, like a fishing permit or a uh, um, small game permit for like pheasants and things. Those are based on calendar year. So make sure and check your 
permits. If you want to go out fishing, you know, in January, if you want to go out and hunt pheasants in January, you actually need to get the current year's permit. So I have already bought my 2021 permits and habitat stamps and everything I need for 2021 to get going this year. Well, there's, let's see, you know, even if you're not a hunter, like I said, there's loads of other things to do. You could go uh, walking and and doing some wildlife exploration. There's obviously ice fishing. Um, just make sure the ice is four inches thick before you go out on the on the lake. It's good to have some ice spikes with you in case you fall through, maybe a rope. Uh, maybe I can go into that in another episode. But yeah, there's wildlife viewing. Oh, in fact, the uh, Cornell Labs and Audubon Society are doing their annual bird count coming up in February. I think February 12th through 15th. So maybe I'll do a separate video on that too, where I can show you how to get out. And they say, you you know, you can even just spend 15 minutes in your backyard or neighborhood park and uh, identifying what kind of birds you're seeing using their app to help you identify them. If, you know, even if you don't know too much about birds, they'll help you figure out, you know, where you are and what birds might be there. Give you a visual indication of, you know, what those birds are. And then you can record how many you see in that time period. And that really helps them out with figuring out migratory patterns and and just counts overall. See how the that bird population is doing in our state. So, yeah, again, that's coming up in February. And I'll try and post a separate video just to get ready for that. And maybe maybe do something like some fun, like a live stream that uh, can go out to one of the state parks or somewhere like that and do a uh, count. So that'd be something to look forward to. It's always, you know, winter's a little, can be a little dreary with a shortened days. So it's always good to have something to look forward to every month to do. This month I still have um, some pheasant hunting I could do or some ice fishing potentially if it stays cold, which I think it's supposed to have a cold snap coming up. Yeah, so let's let's go take a look at some of the guides on this site because you know if you actually want to get into hunting and fishing but you don't know the rules um, this is the place to come to find out what you need to know to make sure you're uh, following the, the state laws and state regulations so anywhere on Nebraska's outdoor Nebraska site you can see this toolbar up here in gray and click on the guides and now you have a um, electronic copy of all of their guides small game waterfowl boating fishing turkey big game public access I'm gonna dive deeper into this this is a great guide for all the public lands in Nebraska where you can hunt and fish uh, and then the stubble access guide um, let's go ahead and actually just click into one of these and just kind of give you an idea of what it looks like here online so I'll just I'll just pick the fishing guide so I'm presented with a couple of options, get the free flash player or open HTML5 fit book. You'll want to most likely use the second option. Flash has been deprecated. Um, not many browsers support this anymore. Oh, you can also up here download just a PDF. So that would also be a good alternative. <clears throat> that PDF would be pretty easy to print out if you wanted to. In a little bit, I'll show you. You can actually order these books from Nebraska, uh, Outdoor Nebraska. And so you can get a printed copy through the mail from them too. But let's go ahead and click on this open HTML5 HTML5 flipbook. There. And now we have a nice full color view that we can page through of this book. Um, some tools for searching and, and saving to a PDF. And this will be exactly like what you would get if you had a printed copy. So they do a good job in the beginning of these guides to give you the most important information you know what are your seasons what are some of the the rules who can you contact in your area for more information um, what's new for 2020 well you know obviously there will be one coming out for 2021 hopefully too so this is still last year's version but you know what's new for the year uh, new regulations oh here's you know information about the fees and the stamps you need so especially like, you know, when I got into hunting, it was 
it's pretty confusing on exactly what stamps I needed for which types of wildlife. There's a you know HIP program and a habitat stamp and a park permit and you know the hunting license itself and what is it for turkeys or what is it for pheasants. You know it's this is where you can go and try and find out your answers and then you know if you can't find it out well you can hit me up I'll try and help you or you know this has the um, that contact information in it um, to contact your local NRD or you know your local office for permitting whatever you need to do let's flip through a couple of these pages here yep so it gets into some of the regulations some of the limits um, catch and release only so it's good to know when where you're fishing um, if you're going to a new lake you might need to refer to this and the, these are usually posted on signs at the lakes too but like what size that you can take if you can take them at all normally if you're doing catch and release you're fine um, if you're on a boat obviously you have some some concerns with making sure you're not transplanting zebra mussels or other things in your uh, in your boat through the um, water on your boat or underneath you know that kind of stuff but if you're just shore fishing and you're catch and release that's pretty simple it's when you get into actually wanting to take some of these fish that you need to know how many you can take what size they have to be if the lake permits it and bag limits yep so bag bag and position limits um, bag is how many you have how many you caught that day possession is not just like in your car but this possession would include like at home in your freezer too if i understand it correctly so if you're if you go out you know if you have a vacation you're doing five days of fishing and you catch five fish um on three days then you need to make sure you've eaten a few of those because you're not supposed to have more than 12 at a time in your possession this is for rainbow tiger trout that's how that works and then there's a lot of rules about baits, uh, where you can use minnows, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, again, this is just a great resource for figuring out what you can do and um, answering your questions. There's also a way, oh, yeah, I mentioned there's a way to request a printed copy of these guides. So let's take a look at this. Actually, you can also find these. I've got a couple here. Here's the small game, waterfowl, and here's the actual public access for 2020, uh, 2021. You can find these in a lot of sporting in places like Walmart, Shields. Uh, you can find them at the state parks, uh, especially you know where you have like a Shram Park where you've got the aquarium. They've got them out there. Um, so you can at the Outdoor Education Center. They've got them here in Lincoln. You know, so anywhere you You've got a, a state park or something like that you can often find these printed out for you but again you can also request a printed guide here <clears throat> this is kind of cool because they actually packet these together so they say if you're you're interested in hunting you can get this whole hunting packet that includes all of these things so you just enter your name and address whether you want a nice 50 page full color brochure of the parks gives you an idea of overview of all the parks and then you can check you know hey i want the hunting packet and it includes it includes some of the stuff that's actually down here in individual like the atlas is on there so that's down here small game permit application um i'm not sure if that's on here but some of these like the waterfowl hunting brochure uh, is probably down here somewhere or you know, you can come down here and just select the individual ones you're interested in. Like I just want to know about public access guide and deer hunting and and some annual fishing guide, something like that. And then you can just request, you know, maybe drop them a comment, whatever you want to say there, and then uh, request your brochures and they'll get them out to you. Pretty nice service. The one thing I'd say it's it's nice. I have this. I picked up the. The public access um, if you've never looked at this before it's divided into about how many 49 different sections and each of these sections corresponds to a page in the book so you find where you are like I'm on I'm in like 43 here 
So then I could just go to page 43 of the book. Or, sorry, map sheet 43. I don't know if it's actually page 43, but I find my my map sheet and that corresponds to that square on the back and now I can see all of the public hunting and fishing areas in my area but you notice it's pretty small and it's also only updated every couple of years so and, and then things actually change more often than that so what you really want to do is you know you might want to have this to flip through it it's kind of fun to look through it but you can't zoom in and you don't know if it's exactly up to date. So I like to come to one of the things I use most on this website is this maps area. So I just clicked on maps in this toolbar. And here's a whole bunch of interactive GIS maps that they've put together for us. Oh, this is just great. So here's that public access. That's the one I was just, oops, that was the one I was just holding up. Uh, and this is all just online. We're going to dive into here in a minute. <clears throat> but you can also filter it out just by public fishing areas, waterfowl zones, the, just the state parks, state trails, public boating areas, lake contour maps. This is really cool. I mean, where else can you find just a nice reference for the lakes you want to fish at? Where are the shelves and where are the creek channels and where maybe are some of the under underwater features that might be hiding the fish. Uh, landscapes, mountain lion sightings, uh, public hunting areas, and the oh Missouri River Access Guide. How can I get my boat into the river? That's great. So find the public, you know, public docks, public um, um what's the word? Boat ramps. <laughs> public boat ramps so you can get into the river. So I mentioned I, I use the public access a lot. Almost every time I go out, you know, if I'm trying to find a new place, I use this. But before I hop in there, I just wanted to show you uh, what it looks like if you just hop into the, if you're just going hunting, what does it look like if you just go to this punt public hunting areas? You can see the maps loading here for us. Something happened, sorry, let me, oh, is it going? Might have a little slow connection today. Okay, yeah, this loaded much faster the last time I did this. It might just be a slow day. But the thing I like about this view is it really calls out every single area. When I'm looking at the public atlas, the areas are outlined. Uh, but they don't have these little flags on them, these little pins. And so it's easy to kind of miss some of the areas um, <laughs> that are small. So, you know, here uh, we've got just a small little area. I can click on it. It tells me it's just 32 acres. I might not have seen that or noticed that on the public access map, or I might have thought it was just a little lake and there was no hunting opportunity there. So it's nice. It gives you the area name. Um, NRD, I guess, manages this one, how, how big it is. It gives you a, a link to go there. And then sometimes it'll tell you some uh, different regulations. Oh, here, this one, I had a page one of two, page two of two here. So this one's got hunting from first Tuesday, Labor Day to April 1st, a phone number to call, um, non-toxic shot only, target shooting prohibited. So it gives you a lot of information about these places which is pretty cool. You could get, you know, this same information is probably on the public access um, map too, but again, this really calls out all the little spots for you nicely. So I'm going to hop over to that um, public access map. So that is what I use the most. So here it is, the public access atlas. Uh, disclaimer and here again we have a um, map of Nebraska and you notice these squares on it and these squares might look familiar to you matches <laughs> this nicely 
So each of your little sections here, if you're used to looking at the printout, you know um, where these are. And although these aren't numbered here in this view, if you hop over to the about, you'll actually see here's all of those numbers. So I know I am in number 43. So I jump down here to map sheet 43 and bam, it zooms right into my, my area. Pretty cool. Over in the legend, let's take a quick look at that. We've got the different types of land. So open fields and waters, CRP, um, open field, small grain, stubble, different, different types, trapping. Well, that's neat. And then we've got NGPC property areas on the map, um, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, State Fish Hatchery, Forest Service. So yeah, everything is called out on here. The about, I showed you, just mostly has these map sheets on it. it gives you a date last modified, that's nice. <clears throat> but the layers I actually use quite a lot, and let me show you why. Um, one thing, like if I'm targeting a new place I want to try out, especially, uh, you know, I'll look around for what's available. I might click on it, and this is the same kind of pop-up we saw in the other map. and tells me, oh, what kind of fish species are here, regulations. That's nice to know going ahead of time. I don't have to look for the sign when I get there. Um, Boats restricted to five miles per hour, no week. 400 feet from Lake Word from the dam. So just basically a ring around the outside, no wake, but Branch Stoke's a pretty big lake. Um, other information about it. And then if I, so I clicked on that fish for that. If I clicked over here on this green area, it's the wildlife management area where you could go hunting and it tells you um, you know, portions are closed to waterfowl, so you have to look for the sign. So lots of great information here about what you can do. But what I'll do next after I've found a place that I might want to go is over here in the top right, I'll switch to the satellite view so I can get a real good idea of the layout of the land, especially if I'm going to be walking it for hunting. And then I can zoom in here. But you notice this is still, it's hard to see uh, what's going on in this and that's where I use this layers feature. So here on the layers, I can adjust this transparency down to about 25%. And now I can really see what's going on. Like I can see parking lots, like here's a parking lot that I couldn't have seen before. Like that was like pretty hard to see up here. But now when I adjust this down, oh bam, there's a parking lot, <laughs> you know? And I can plan, oh, I can walk along here and go around this way and just kind of, Think about where I want to target when I'm out there. Um, this also is a good way to show, to see where, you know, if I launch my boat, this looks like a place to launch boats from. Um, I could come back in here. I could go along this here. The Unfortunately, this map does not have the contour layer. So you'd have to hop back out to that other map of the lake contours to see the contours of this lake but still just gives you an idea of what the lake looks like from above. <clears throat> if you've seen some of my videos this year, um, I've been off hunting in this area. I did a dove hunt. I think I did two videos here. I hunted in this area. I went up here a little bit and then over in this area. And you can tell by looking at this, like, like when I was um, getting ready to dove hunt, I knew that they planted some wildflower plants and stuff around Branch Stoke, but I didn't know where. It doesn't say where. They were just like, oh, we've got 26 acres planted. And so I came to this map, turned the transparency down, and then I kind of zoomed in and I was like, oh, this looks like, that looks like something there. And I figured out that, you know, that's where they're doing the planting of um, sunflowers and millet and stuff like that for wildlife. So you can use this to kind of find out where those food plots are that will help you hunt. Down here, this one's a little bit harder to see, but you can kind of tell there's rows in here. And, and this is actually the 
like sunflowers in this area and this is some other I can't remember what they had planted here but something else they had planted there so you can do a little um, scoping out from here to find out more about it uh, in addition to this site I also use an app called Fishbrain and for fishing and that, that like lets me look at a lake and see who's been catching what on what lures at that lake and then for hunting I use Onyx uh, O N X uh, to more just to like set waypoints and map they I don't I don't think Onyx has like um, feedback from other hunters that I remember I don't recall seeing any that'd be a nice addition but those are some of the tools I use to find a new place and figure out where I want to go yeah, and you know, when you drive out to these places, this area isn't very well flagged. Like, you can't tell that this isn't just private property a lot of times. And so that is actually when it's kind of good to have one of these in your car too. Because you can be like, all right, so if I park here and start walking, I can't remember how far this way I can walk before I get into private property. So both Onyx is good for that. Onyx hunting um, tells you your boundaries of everything. And as you're driving around, having one of these maps is pretty handy too. Uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of the um, overview of how I use this. Oh, there's a couple other tools on here. So you saw the layers. You can actually get directions. Um, so if I wanted to find out like how do I get to this little parking lot from my house I can click on this guy and then I can say directions and I put that there and then this must have just tried to use my current location which it's not quite accurate but it tells me you know I'm like 33 minutes away and this is the best route to get there so that gives you an idea of how long it's gonna take uh, to get to that place you're targeting to explore, which is pretty handy. And then, you, as you might have seen, you can like add stops. So, if I wanted to add this to a stop, then it would take me, okay, that's how you get from there to there. And then I want to go over here. So, pretty neat. <laughs> you can plan your whole, whole weekend out, just make a big loop. Uh, now, next, I'm going to come down here and do a little hunting bam and then nice handy little print button here you could print it all out uh, it would be really cool if you could um, send this to wise or Google or something like that I haven't tried that but that would be pretty neat because you know I'm not one for <laughs> printed directions as much I just want it on my phone but yeah uh, so that's directions search search might not be what you think it would be um, there's actually two searches there's an address search that is more like what you probably think like I want to find you know whatever lake or whatever state park this search is where are these species so let's say you wanted to find some mountain lions and then they're only in one zone here in Nebraska so you click that and bam it takes you over there and you could hunt mountain lions in this zone over here in the, you can tell this is the sand hills. You can see the dunes. It's pretty neat. So right up in that top, top left corner of Nebraska is where you'd go if you wanted to hunt mountain lions. What about Bighorn, Pine Ridge. So a bit of a large area if you wanted to hunt bighorn sheep, kind of out there in the panhandle. Yep, and then so this search is more of like I was saying, you know, what if you want to know where Lake Ogallala, Lake Ogallala was? Unfortunately, it's not filtered to just Nebraska, which well, I wish it kind of, I don't know if that would be a setting on this ArcGIS map base layer that they're using. But that would be kind of cool if they could just say, don't search anything outside Nebraska. But this actually went to the city of Ogallala. <laughs> uh, but, you know, you could start from there and look around. And again, I've got that satellite view on and I could switch back to the street view by clicking on this uh, toggle button up here. Cool. Well, that's kind of an overview of 
the um, the different options and things that I use on this website. And again, I use it all the time, especially when I'm trying to find a new new place to hunt, a new place to fish. And I'll be using that a lot this spring and summer, trying to take you to some new places. Uh, you know, come along with me on my exploration. Maybe I'll inspire you to get out there and do some of your own too. So, you know, just remember, take care of yourself and take care of Nebraska and let Nebraska take care of you. It's out there waiting. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, do me a favor and, and like it, and subscribe, and come again um, next time for my next episode. All right, take care. We'll see you later.